Hi, everybody. Phil, I'm wearing my new Netlify socks. I just want you to know they're very comfortable. Uh, my name's Scott. I'm the CEO of Forestry.io, where we build a headless CMS uh, for the Jamstack. It's backed by Git. But today, I'm going to talk about the UX of these two editing experiences. One is the traditional CMS, and the other is a site builder like Wix or Squarespace. And then I'm going to demo a new open source project from our team that we're really excited to announce. Um, hey, I need to bring up my speaker notes, guys. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, major fail. And I think we're good. OK, cool. Yeah, so I'm going to de demo a new open source project that we're really excited to announce today. Um, and curious to see what you guys think. When, when, us, when we developers build a website, we typically choose a CMS like one of these. And we often choose headless CMSs nowadays. But we do so because we can be super productive, focus on building fast sites that are extensible, and with structured content. And we can hand off a UI like one of these to the content creator. But this is WordPress in 2008. And honestly, not much has changed from like, the, the user experience of editing content in a CMS in the last decade or two. To the content editor, they just have a collection of form fields that they map to a web page on their site. And there's a Save button, and there's not much context of what they're editing. And now that we have the Jamstack, the development experience is just so much better. But to the content creator, they often lose the ability to preview. And if they don't, it's still that clunky two-step process. I was just talking to a team that has to wait 15 minutes every time uh, they save their, their site to see it. Meanwhile, tools like Wix and Squarespace are offering their users amazing live editing experiences. This is what I mean by the visual future of content editing. People love this because they get the context they need to create great things. But of course, we developers hate them because a site builder is a black box, and we can't hack on it. We don't know what's going on under the hood. So if we were to plot these two products on uh, this graph here with content creator love on the vertical axis and developer productivity on the horizontal axis, site builders would be somewhere around here, like high on the content for the content person and low for the developer person. CMSs would be somewhere around here, low for the co low content editor love, high developer productivity. But what if we could give our editors an experience that they love without sacrificing the productivity that we need as developers? And what if we could head in a toolkit to build editing functionality into our site that was open source and extensible? Well, we're laying the foundation for this vision today with Tina CMS. Tina is an open source toolkit for real time editing. And I'm really excited for you to see what it looks like. So I'm going to switch over to demo mode here. OK, so I'm going to install Tina on this default Gatsby starter blog. This could be any site, uh, but I'm just going to use this one because it's one that we're all familiar with. And I'll bump up the resolution a little bit here. Let's, that's probably pretty good. So if I flip over to VS Code, um, all I'm going to do is add the Gatsby Tina CMS plugin to the Gatsby config file, which I already did, I guess, before the call or before the talk. Uh, it's an, you know, an open source package. I npm installed it, so we're good to go. Uh, if I refresh the page, you should notice one difference. We've got an editing icon in the bottom left-hand corner. Clicking that opens up Tina CMS. So now this is editing mode. We're going to populate this CMS with fields. But this is just a React UI that sits on top of your site and, and interacts with the page. You know, we're not setting up a separate CMS. We're building editing functionality into our site. So let's add some fields. Uh, I think what we'll do is go to a blog post, because that will be more interesting. So if I go open up uh, this blog post and I import remark form from Tina CMS, which is just a higher order component, and I add it and I wrap uh, the template with the remark form and just add a few things to my GraphQL query, you're going to see a few fields in Tina. Let's go back, refresh the page. 
And there we have it. So we're just bringing in all the data. These are, the, these are just the defaults for TNet right now. Uh, if I go to a different page, you'll see the context changes, the, like the content of forms changes, change. And let's say, hello, jam stack. We get real live updating right on our Gatsby site here. Um, so one thing that's cool is if I show you what's happening, this is what, hello world. If I show you, show you what's happening in the Markdown file, this Gatsby site just is uh, powered by Markdown, you'll see that um, Tina is writing to the file system. So I can say, this is writing to the file system. Cool. So that's a simple use case of Tina. And I'm going to show you one that's just a sli like slightly more configured. Um, Super Vacation Land. This is a real resort. Just kidding. But maybe we'll say Super Vacation Land 2.0. And instead of this image, we'll drag in another image. You can, c you can completely configure these fields. There's a default set of fields you can use and play with. But you can build your own or extend these in any way you want. Uh, if I scroll down a bit, we have these different blocks here. Let's click into pineapple, and we'll call it, um, I don't know, apples. And then we say we want it to be the second item and not the first. There we have it. It's live updating in real time. Now, we decided to take this one step further. And we noticed for writing long form co content like a blog post, you're kinda, it doesn't feel great to be limited to that narrow window. So uh, I'll click on one of these. We, and we're giving developers the ability to drop in editable regions on their page. So if you're in edit mode, you can edit in page. Clicking this, again, uh, it's more like editing a medium post. Hello, Jamstack. And less like using a separate CMS. Um, and we find that this combination of additional UIs, like the sidebar and, and others to come in the future, as well as in-page editing, gives edi editors the best experience to create content. So let's just reflect on what happened here. We registered some packages, or we, sorry, we added some packages to our site and registered some fields. And we essentially replaced the need for a CMS with an uh, inline, inline editing experience that still meets the needs of developers. It still writes to external data sources. But you probably don't want an edit button on your live site, and you don't want you know, your editing team to have to run a, a development environment locally. So if you're interested in a collaborative hosted version of Tina, you can check out tinacms.org and get early access to uh, the hosted version. So I'm just going to flip back over to our slides here. T can you guys see this? Yeah. Tina currently supports um, React-based sites like Gatsby and Next.js. Oh, no. But uh, we have plans to open it up to view-based systems, too. Um, and it currently writes to Markdown files. But what if you could put Tina like, on top of that WordPress site? And instead of writing to that Markdown file, it's writing to an external data source, like a, like a WordPress database or Airtable or a Google Sheet. We feel like we're coming out of a monolithic CMS era. And next-gen sites need a next-gen CMS. And that's what we're trying to lay the foundation with Tina. So if you're curious, go to tinacms.org. If you go to slash jamstackconf, uh, we'll bump you to the top of the list for, to test the, the cloud-hosted product if you're interested. But it's all open source. It's available now. Uh, you can customize it in many different ways. Thanks very much.